Here's a real investigative report from a local television news entity, WTHR-TV. Well, Mark, it's local. What do we care? You're going to care because this is unbelievable. Inside his central Indiana office, a longtime tax consultant sits at his desk, shaking his head in disbelief. Quote, there's not a doubt in my mind there's huge fraud taking place here, he said, slowly flipping through the pages of a tax return. So the preparer doesn't want you to know his name for fear of reprisal, but he does want you to know about a nationwide problem with a huge price tag. So he came to 13 investigates to blow the whistle, that TV station. The scheme involves illegal immigrants. We're talking about a multi-billion dollar fraud scheme, scheme that's taking place and no one is talking about it, he said. Illegal immigrants who are filing tax returns. Stick with me on this. Remember John McCain? Well, they file tax returns, you know. Well, the Internal Revenue Service says everyone who's employed in the U.S., even those who are working here illegally, must report income and pay taxes. Of course, illegal aliens are not supposed to have a Social Security number, so for them to pay taxes, the IRS created what they call an ITIN or an Individual Taxpayer Identification Number. See how hard we have to work to facilitate the lawlessness of the illegal alien. Isn't it amazing? They have a special number. We know who they are. We have their address. They're not picked up. They're not... No, no. Can't do that. That would be profiling. A nine-digit ITIN number. But, and notice, by the way, profiling only goes one way. When you have sanctuary cities, in-state tuition, an ITIN number, all these special benefits conferred to illegal aliens, you're not profiling illegal aliens to give them benefits, right? Of course you are. And yet, when you try to enforce the law against illegal aliens, then you're profiling illegally. Get my point? I think most of you do. A nine-digit ITIN number, this is key, issued by the IRS provides both residential and non-residential aliens with a unique ID number that allows them to file tax returns. That is, illegal aliens who live here and illegal aliens who live abroad. They seem like a good idea. It's now backfiring. Each spring, at tax preparation offices all across America, many illegal immigrants are now eagerly filing tax returns to take advantage of a tax loophole using their ITIN numbers to get huge refunds from the IRS. The loophole is called the Additional Child Tax Credit. See, that's not a refund, ladies and gentlemen, just to clarify this. That's a tax credit. In other words, that's a welfare payment. It's a fully refundable credit of up to $1,000 per child, and it's meant to help working families who have children living at home. It's a tax payment. That is, we taxpayers pay it. And the poorer the person, the higher the tax payment. They call it a credit. Credited to what? To having a child, that's all. But the 13 investigates, again, the local TV channel, has found many illegal aliens are claiming the tax credit for kids who live in Mexico. Lots and lots of kids in Mexico. Quote, we've seen sometimes 10 or 12 dependents most times, nieces and nephews on these tax forms, the whistleblower told Eyewitness News. The more you put on there, the more money you get back. The whistleblower has thousands of examples, and he brought some of them to 13 investigates. While identifying information such as names and addresses on the tax returns were redacted, it was still clear that the tax filers had received large tax refunds after claiming additional tax credits for many dependents. The filer said, here's a return right here. We've got a $10,300 refund for nine nieces and nephews, pointing to the words niece and nephew listed on the tax forms nine separate times. We're getting an 11000 refund on this tax return. There's seven nieces and nephews, he said, pointing to another set of documents. I can bring out stacks and stacks. It's just so easy. It's ridiculous. WTHR spoke to several illegal aliens who confirmed it is easy. They all agreed to talk with WTHR investigative reporter Bob Siegel and a translator as long as they agreed not to reveal their identity. I think this is important enough, folks. I'm going through it. One of the workers who was interviewed at his home in southern Indiana admitted 
His address was used this year to file tax returns by four other uh, illegal aliens who don't even live there. Those four workers claim 20 live inside the one residence, and as a result, the IRS sent these illegal aliens tax refunds totaling $29,000. $29,000. Thirteen investigates saw only one little girl who lives at the address, a small mobile home. We wondered about the 20 kids claimed as tax deductions. Quote, they don't live here, said the illegal alien. The other kids are in their country of origin, which is Mexico, unquote. He later explained none of the 20 children have ever visited the United States, let alone lived here. So why should illegal aliens receive tax credits for children living in a foreign country, which is a violation of IRS tax rules? Quote, if the opportunity is there and they can give it to me, why not take advantage of it, the illegal alien said. Other illegal aliens in Indiana told the uh, television station the same thing. Their families are collecting tax refunds for children who do not live in this country. Several told WTHR they were told it was legal for them to claim the tax credit for a child who does not live in the U.S. And the IRS was repeatedly warned about this quote-unquote loophole by the Treasury Department Inspector General for Tax Administration's office. Russell George He said, the IRS has known about this problem for years. So what's Obama going to do about this? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. You see, only the things that occur on his watch, which are politically beneficial to him, or he can spin as politically beneficial, is he responsible for. He won't go after this because he doesn't have a problem with it. So, ladies and gentlemen, just so you understand, even if we secured the borders today, where not one illegal alien can cross, you and I, under the Internal Revenue Code and the way it's managed, have been, and unless they change it, will be, subsidizing to the tune of billions of dollars every year people who live overseas and have never even come to the United States. And yet the government's not big enough And yet the rich don't pay enough. And yet we don't have enough skin in the game, do we? This was broken, this story, by a local television news outfit. I've yet to see it in the New York Slimes, the Washington Compost, or on any network news program, and I doubt I will. Meanwhile, let them keep reporting about how the price of gasoline dropped four cents. So now we can all celebrate that happy times are here again.